Um, my name is Rochinat Jingila from the Railway Safety Regulator. I am here to talk to you about uh, the regulatory tools that we use uh, as the regulator to regulate the railway industry. Just to highlight the things that I'll be talking about, uh, I'll talk a bit about who is the RSR, then I'll get straight into the types of regulatory tools that we use as a regulator. Then I'll just list uh, a few of uh, the regulations that we have published already that are currently in force, uh, which are the ones that uh, the operators are required to comply with. And I'll talk about uh, the regulations which uh, we are busy developing or which are currently under development. Then I'll talk about the next set of our tools, which, is, which are the determinations. I'll list the ones that we have published and what they seek to achieve. And then I'll talk uh, about standards. Under standards, I'll give you uh, the list of the standards that we have, that we have published, that are in force. Then I will just briefly discuss uh, the purpose of the various uh, safety standards. We've got different types of standards. We've got uh, industry standards, we've got uh, local standards, we've got uh, national standards, and the regulator standards. But I'll uh, spend a bit more time on the regulator standards and the, the national standards. Then I'll just highlight uh, to you how do they fit together, that is the standards. Uh, I'll give you a hierarchy of, of how, they, how uh, they are interconnected or how they are linked. Before I get on to the regulatory tools, it's important to, to understand that everyone who runs the railway system or if you want to operate on the railway system, you need to have an operating license, which is a safety permit. Now, to obtain that permit, there's a process that we, we have guided the industry on where you have uh, your submissions that you make to the RSR, which are accompanied by your safety management system reports and applicable uh, supporting documentation. And once you have been uh, granted a safety permit, that means as an operator, you are then bound by the regulatory tools and the legislative prescripts produced by the RSR. So it's important to note that if you have a safety permit, all of the regulatory tools that we have published apply to you. Yes, uh, there may be instances where operators may, may need to request for exemptions. And the tools that we publish, they are specific if there are any exemptions that are applicable. But in general, the regulations that we have published, they apply to all operators. So if you operate in our industry, and you have a safety permit, and uh, the regulator has published uh, the, the regulatory tools, they will apply to you as an operator. If they've got a, an application to different areas of the operators, they will be specific within those tools, uh, whether, whether it be a regulation or a standard or a, a determination. In general, however, the standards and the determinations, they apply to all operators, both the main operators and the category C and B uh, operators. So these tools that I'm, uh, I've been discussing about, they are to be read in that context. Okay, uh, Philippe, I'll go then to my first uh, section that I'll deal with uh, to tell you about uh, who we are. The regulator or the RSR is a statutory body which has been established in accordance with the National Railway Safety Regulator Act, which is Act 16 of 2002. Of course, it was amended in 2006. The main purpose of us being established is to provide oversight in the railway industry. So we provide safety oversight of the railway transport, but the operators still remain responsible for ensuring that they operate safely. So ours is to make sure that we provide the, the relevant oversight. We are required to promote improved safety performance in the railway transport industry. This we do so that we can promote rail as a preferred mode of transport. So we know that uh, if the railway industry is safe and uh, the customers are comfortable uh, with using the railways, obviously that will mean a growth in the, trailer, in the railway industry. Uh, what we also do, we develop uh, regulations uh, that are required in terms of the act that I've spoken about. Uh, these are the regulations that guide the industry in terms of how to execute or discharge their duties. Uh, we then monitor compliance to these regulatory tools. Uh, we monitor compliance with the Act, with the regulations, and the various standards and, and determinations that we have uh, published. Uh, then we make sure that we give effect to the rest of the, of the Act. So that's the main reason why we have been established as the regulator. Now, if we look at the regulatory tools, 
the regulations are developed according or in terms of the various sections of the Act. Various sections of the Act make provision for different types of regulations to be uh, developed. So we base those regulations on the Act, which is Act 16. The main determinations that we have are the determinations that have been developed in terms of Section 23 of the Act and Section 28 of the Act. I'll, I'll touch a bit on, on what they are. Then, yes, we've got standards and in some instances we provide guidelines or uh, compulsory notices. And these are all the tools that are used by the industry or the operators when running their railways. I've mentioned that the determination um, is developed in terms of Section 23 of the Act. Now, that section provides the regulator to determine the format of the safety management system that needs to be produced or submitted by the operators. And Section 28, the same determination that we've grouped these two determinations into one, we cover both the format of the SMS, which is a safety management system. Then uh, we also address the content of what is expected to be contained within the safety management system and what is expected to be contained within the safety management system report, which is the report that the operators submit to the RSR when they apply for a safety permit. That's basically their license uh, to operate uh, uh, within the railway space. In terms of standards, Section 29 of the Act makes provision for the minister to make procedures or to provide the regulations that guides on the procedures to be followed to develop uh, the, the safety standards. Uh, then in terms of Section 29.2, that section makes provision for the regulator to, the, to then adopt standards that have been developed. The standards are maybe standards that are developed uh, through uh, the standards development body, that is uh, SABS, which are the national standards. It may be standards uh, that are developed by the industry or local standards which are specific to an area or the standards that have been developed by the regulator itself. So Section 29 makes provision for us to adopt these standards and make them part of the regulations. Now, the standards that have been adopted by the regulator or in terms of Section 29 become binding to all the industry players. In other words, if you're an operator, you're operating and there are standards that have been developed in terms of the procedure prescribed by the minister, and we have adopted those standards, then it means as an operator, you need to comply with those standards. Just to list maybe the, the regulations that we have published, we've got the regulations, I've already mentioned this one. We have a regulation uh, that deals with the procedures to be followed in developing standards. So we don't just develop standards without following any particular procedure. There is a regulation that guides that. And that is, if you look at the standards development regulation that, that deals with the national standards, it also guides in terms of procedures. So this regulation that we have within the, uh, within the RSA is in line or it does not violate those uh, provision in the standards development uh, regulation, which is for the national standards. We have a penalty fee regulation, uh, which has been published in 2011 and amended in 2013. That assists us in dealing with when the, where there's contraventions and violations, basically. Uh, that is in terms of our Section 45 of the Act. Then we have a, which is also given by the minister, we've got a determination on safety permit fees. Uh, it's also under Section 23, Paragraph 2 or Subsection 2 of the Act. And um, that determination is the determination which uh, specifies the fees that are, pay, are payable uh, to the regulator or uh, by the operators in terms of their operations within the industry. Then we've got a, a safety management system, which is the SMS uh, system uh, or SMS uh, and SMS report together with the railway occurrence reporting regulation that has been published uh, quite a while ago. And the subsequent regulations obviously um, supersede the various parts of that regulation. But I think uh, when I touch on the regulations that we are busy developing, you will note that there's, there are some which will therefore uh, replace or this one, the one that I'm talking about now, which is the, the SMS and SMS report regulation. Okay, Philippe, uh, the regulations that we are busy developing as a regulator, maybe before I touch on the, the list, one of the reasons uh, why we end up including or adding extra regulatory tools or enforcement tools is when we encounter various problems in the industry uh, and we need to make the means for the industry and for ourselves to curb those problems like security issues or issues of encroachment into uh, the railway space. Between ourselves and the, and the, and the industry, we've got uh, different uh, duties uh, from our side to provide uh, those guidelines and those regulations. So those are some of the reasons why we 
end up uh, strengthening our regulatory tools to make sure that we curb the issues that we are encountering in the industry. On the list of the regulations under development, we've got a draft railway safety and security regulation. So this one has been published already. Uh, it was published uh, in Feb for public comments. Uh, we follow the, a normal or a standard a procedure to develop regulations. So one of the stages or one of the steps that we need to go through is to publish the regulations for uh, for comments. Obviously, this is done through the Department of Transport. And once the, the public comments have been received, together with the Department of Transport, we address those comments. In some instances, the, the, the industry may raise issues or things that we might have overlooked in developing those regulations. So together with the Department of Transport, we then address those uh, those uh, issues that have been raised and there is a process that we also uh, go through in making sure that we follow a rigorous process in developing these, uh, these regulations. It's, a, it's the social economic impact assessment system. It's uh, done under the Department of Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation. So th those regulations, uh, before we they get promulgated, they have to go through those various processes. Okay, I've talked about the railway safety and security reg uh, regulation. I'll talk a little bit about what it seeks to achieve. Then we have the National Railway Safety Standards Development Regulation. I'll talk a bit uh, about that one as well. Then we've got a regulation that is called the regulations regarding category and type of all notifiable uh, railway occurrences that are to be reported to the CEO of the RSR. So the operators that are operating out there need to report occurrences to the RSR. So we've, got, we've developed uh, or we've updated a regulation that addresses that. Now, if I go to the first regulation that I spoke about, which is the Draft Railway Safety and Security Regulation, uh, the one that has been published in Feb 2020, that regulation makes provision for the management of security matters to the extent that these affect safe railway operations. So we know that in as much as we are regulating railway safety, there are security-related matters that affect safe railway operations. So this regulation deals with those matters. We want to look at the management of security, which is an element that characterizes the resilience of the railway system to theft, to vandalism. So we want to make sure that the system is resilient to these external forces that relate to theft, vandalism, and other uh, human behavior that are unwan unwanted, which will impact on safe uh, railway operations. So the, we've received the public comments on that one, and we are busy addressing uh, the public comments. We've also published the standards development regulations, which provides for the initiation, the development, adoption, and the implementation of railway safety standards by di uh, different stakeholders. I say different stakeholders because it's various stakeholders that are authorized to initiate and develop standards. But then this uh, regulation guides that process. It also points out uh, the procedures to be followed in developing the various types of standards. So if you are going to be developing the, the safety standards in the industry, this would guide you in terms of the various procedures or the steps that you need to follow for us to adopt it as a as a valid uh, standard. So that was published by the through the Department of Transport also in February 2020. Then we've got another regulation that is under development uh, that has not been published. Okay, maybe let me deal with the, uh, the ones that have been published uh, before I go to the last one. The last one that we have published is the one that deals with the category and the type of the occurrences that are reportable to the RSR. We want to ensure that uh, all the occurrences within the industry are managed adequately with, in, in line with the, the safety management system of the operators. So these include the actual reporting of these occurrences. It includes how do you manage these occurrences that you have reported. Talk to things like a provision of the information. There are certain reports that the regulator requires or expect of the operators to, to submit for us to, to monitor that these occurrences are, are being managed. And these reports forms or are incorporated in the state of safety report that we produce annually as the RSR. And we want to make sure that when an occurrence has happened, the scene of the occurrence is managed adequately. These regulations, they deal with matters such as those. Then if we look at the one regulation that we are developing uh, with the Department of Transport, is the one that deals with railway reserves. We have a problem of uh, our reserve being accessed illegally, uh, what we call unauthorized access to, to our reserves. So there's a regulation that we are busy uh, crafting together with the department. We are hoping that will be published also soon. We had to prioritize the ones that I've already mentioned so that we deal with the other matters that had to be dealt with upfront. 
So this one is also receiving priority. It also seeks to deal with risk associating with, associated with uh, people being stuck by train. We know that if people access our reserves uh, illegally, uh, there's that risk of being struck by trains. That access or unauthorized access also lead to unsafe operating conditions, which we are supposed to provide oversight over. The regulation also seeks to seek to deal with interruption to services. If there's unauthorized access to our reserves, obviously it disrupts our services. So this regulation seeks to also assist in that. It also deals with issues of vegetation, environmental degradation, interference with the signaling system. And I'm sure you have seen quite a lot of incidents being shown on TV where people are, are, are accessing our reserves themselves uh, illegally and vandalizing our system. So we are hoping that uh, this uh, regulation will also contribute in us as an industry curbing this sketch that is really, really unwanted in our industry. Uh, in terms of published determinations, I've already mentioned the, the ones that we have published, but just to go through them again, is the determination that deals with the format, the form, and the content of the SMS that is required for the different uh, categories of operators. Then we've got a determination that we've recently published in March, uh, which is a determination on, on the verbal safety crystal communication. And we then have that determination that I spoke about that deals with uh, the permit fees that is promulgated by the minister. And it's an annual uh, determination because these gets updated annually. Now, in terms of, uh, let me just single out the, the one that deals with verbal safety critical communication protocol so that it becomes clearer why we have gone through uh, this route of introducing this determination. And I must uh, point this out that we are working, having published it, we are already working uh, with the industry with regards to implementing this, its requirements and we are working with the industry in terms of whatever changes we need to uh, implement on on this regulation so what is uh, on, what this determination seeks to achieve it uh, it provides a uh, detailed communication guidelines and a framework that is need to be used for undertaking safety critical work or safety critical communication within the industry. So when the safety critical uh, employees communicate certain safety critical messages, this guideline is published to, to assist in that. It also seeks to enhance improved procedures for this uh, communication. We want to also standardize how these messages are communicated across the industry because different operators traverses on each other's uh, networks. So we need to have a standard way of these safety critical messages being communicated. And we expecting or we want this to assist us in reducing the, the occurrences. Now, let me move quickly to the railway safety standards. Why do we have standards? The, sta the standards uh, provide the minimum requirements for the management of safe railway operations. If you look at the hierarchy of our regulatory tools, it's first the act, which is existing, is at a high level. It doesn't give you a, a lot of detail in terms of the specific things that you need to do within the industry. Now, the regulations focus on particular areas which are covered within the Act. But still, if you want to uh, get to the level of detail of an operational activity, you need a standard. So that is why we have developed standards which provide minimum requirements to manage safe railway operations. And they ensure that operations are being managed uniformly. So we use the same standards uh, right across. Uh, we, we use the same yardstick to measure everybody, basically. They assist us in reducing occurrences. They provide a measure against which we can measure compliance. So when we go and measure uh, people for compliance, these are the standards that assist us to check that they do uh, measure for compliance. And we use these standards to, when we go to audit, to check that the specific provision within the standards are complied with. We use this also when we do what we call technical workshops or training. We also engage in training sessions with the industry where we familiarize the industry with uh, the requirements of these standards. Okay, um, that was uh, the purpose of our railway safety standards. Uh, now, if I go to the actual standards, uh, we've got a list of standards, but the main standard, I think, is the, the SAMS 3000 standard-1. Uh, that is an SMS general standard. It's general because it covers a variety of issues or items in the, the railway space and it's not detailed enough to be used for specific elements. For, uh, for example, it does cover electrical distribution, overhead and traction system, but to a very high level of detail. Then if you want a more details on that particular area, we've got a substandard. Uh, it's a substandard not because it's uh, inferior, it's because it elaborates on an element of the main standard. So we've got various substandards. The list is 3000-2-1, then it's 3000-2-2. Those standards, they deal with various provision within the, the SMS. Then those substandards, they also have sub-substandards. 
Now the sub substandard deal with a detailed element within the substandard. If I make an example, uh, SANS 3000-1, one of the elements deals with human factors management. Now human factors management is a discipline on its own. Then we have a SANS standard, which is SANS 3000-4 of 2011, which now deals specifically with uh, human factors management. Now, within human factors, there's various areas. One of the things that we have encountered in the industry that seems to be a continuing uh, issue, which we had to intervene in, is fatigue management. Uh, we know, you, you know that we work in an environment where people are working shifts, uh, sometimes long shifts, and fatigue becomes an issue uh, if it's not uh, adequately managed. And we've had to deal with an element of fatigue, which is within the human factors management uh, standard. Now, to deal with that, we have developed a, a regulator standard, which clarifies to the industry the things that we are expecting as far as fatigue management is concerned. So uh, this is how then these standards uh, are interrelated. And all of these, they support the safety management system, which we have published uh, in the determination. So uh, I'm hoping that it is clearer how the, the various tools are working. So firstly, we have uh, at the highest level, obviously, the Constitution, then our Act. Then following our Act are the regulations, then the standards and determinations, and then the substandards that, that gives uh, more detailed requirements in terms of what are we expecting regarding safe railway operations. Yeah, maybe to highlight the published standards that the regulator has published, uh, th these are the RSR standards. These are available on our website. However, the national standards are obtainable from the SABS. The standards that we have on, uh, which are the regulator standards, are RSR003, which deal with occurrence management. Uh, then we have RSR002-2-3-1, uh, uh, which deals with wheels, axles, and bearings. And now this is also a, a sub-element within the rolling stock uh, standard. So this is a sub-substandard. So then we have uh, RSR 00-4-1, which is a standard that deals with fatigue management. Then we've got a standard that deals with stations, which is 2-7. So the, the, that's a suite of standards that we have together with our regulations and our uh, determinations that we use to regulate the industry. Maybe just to share with you what we have also in the pipeline, we are anticipating at some time in the future that there will be a high-speed railway system in our country. So we have started as a regulator to prepare a set of standards that will assist us on dealing or managing the high-speed rail system because the, the parameters are different. The technical requirements are different. Various things are completely different to the current set of rules. So we have started a process that will assist us, but I think we we'll just need to see how the, that process unfolds as far as the plans of the government are concerned. Colleagues, I think that covers basically the set of regulatory tools that the RSR utilizes. When we develop these tools, we do engage the industry. And what I'm going to plead with the industry to do is to engage us. When these tools are published, for comments, please do engage the, those uh, tools so that you can influence and provide your input to make sure that your inputs are, are incorporated uh, in the final regulation. Because once a regulation has been published, it becomes a, a compliance tool.